Hello everyone. I uh, hope you all are doing well. Thank you for showing so much love on my previous videos. Um, so today I decided to talk about Australian guidelines for different topics and um, how to prepare from those guidelines because I know that in the beginning it gets really uh, frustrating and overwhelming to read those guidelines and uh, find those guidelines. So I'll be telling you one by one for each module and we'll provide links down below as well and all of them are free of course. So starting with the first and most important guideline um, that is RSCGP. Okay, so RSCGP has most topics that you are going to be asked in the exam, which includes uh, medicine topics, mostly respiratory, cardiovascular, hematology, or um, you can say like any topic from medicine is going to be there in the RSCGP as well as the ophthalmology topics, the ENT topics, the dermatology topics, everything is covered in RSCGP. So what you have to do is you have to write the topic like for example you are talking about ocular injuries or you are talking about for say um, um, myocardial infarction you have to write that and uh, write RSCGP along with it on the google bar and you will get the guidelines for from RSCGP. What you have to do is choose the most recent ones like rcgp will have um ocular injury guidelines from 2016 2018 2020 2022 then you're supposed to choose the most recent one that is going to be more relevant and uh with the questions are going to come from that guideline okay so you just don't need to go and read the 2010 and 2009 guidelines those are not for us okay um like that if you think about pediatrics so the main thing in pediatrics is rch guidelines or if you write any uh, pediatric topic like uh, febrile seizures or uh, constipation or in cases like that those are the topics asked in the exam and you write uh, rch along with it then you will get rch guidelines and those are not like uh, there will be only one guideline for each pediatric topic from rch so it's not confusing you will straight away find that guideline and you have to you can just go and read it okay so uh, rscgp is a little bit confusing but rch is not very confusing if we move on and talk about um uh, the um gynecology and obstetric topics then there is sa health sa health is good you what you have to do again you have to write the topic write sa health you will straight away get the guidelines from google and then uh, what i prefer doing is uh, read the charts from SA Health because they are very big guidelines most of the times and uh, the charts have all the important things so memorizing and reading those charts or you know uh, keeping those for you for the later uh, revising purposes to screenshots and all that's helpful but not uh, go word by word for every guideline because that's gonna take a lot of time from you okay so um, just be a little smart with that and read the charts only that will be helpful and you will be able to retain as well if you're not understanding the charts then obviously you can go through the text once but um charts are more than enough and questions are asked like that like you know step by step approach like uh, this test has been done now what you will do this test has been done done after this test now what you will do so the charts are made that way also like step by step so those are very helpful um, then there are a few guidelines for smaller topics like if you are reading uh, driving then uh, the driving guidelines uh, you can do from Austroads. Um, i'll provide the link down below um, that Austroad guideline has everything about driving but you don't need to do it uh, like word by word again because this is very detailed guideline you just have to do uh, charts for important topics that you are seeing in the recalls because you won't be able to do it for every topic okay then if you talk about orthopedics then ortho bullets is good or to like every topic from orthopedics is available on ortho bullets in a smaller and nicer summarized version and th this is a very good guideline you will uh, like it I think it's used by USMLE people as well, but uh, it's helpful for us as well. So um, ortho bullets, I really like for orthopedics. There is med bullets. Med bullets has uh, these points for medicine topics. Those are good, but what I used it for is uh, MCQs. There are free MCQs on med, med bullets for every topic in medicine. You don't have to do it all. You can only uh, do it for topics that you are confused about, that you have 
uh, you're not developing good understanding for then those topics for GIT for uh, respiratory cardiovascular just write those topics in med bullets and uh, solve the MCQs available for those topics I'll be providing the link and uh, in that way you will have some practice of the topics that are important for the exam and uh, you will you know just uh, know which, which type of questions exam can ask okay then if you are looking for the surgery topics like uh, the surgery topics that present in the emergency care then there is a gu good guideline called emergency care institute new south wales guideline i really like that and you can find uh, a lot of topics there those are very concise and presented nicely i think uh, that is a good guideline other than that if you are looking for ec like good ECG examples then life in the fast lane is good website for that uh, and there's one YouTube video that summarizes the ECGs very well in very short time period I would be linking that down below as well that's called dirty medics um, I liked it also if you um, are looking uh, for the screenings because AMC is a big fan of screenings I would say so uh, red book is good the screenings are also present on the RACGP guidelines, but I think uh, it's a very controversial question that uh, from where the screening questions are asked because there's a minor difference between the Red Book and RACGP updated versions. So I would say um, just do the Red Book and uh, for the for the screenings and there are many screenings in the red books you don't have to do all of them but there are a few important ones uh, which are mostly asked like the colon screening the breast cancer screening uh, these are really important and this uh, the smaller um, diabetic screenings and there are many more i would like to make a separate video on the uh, how to read a red book and which topics are important from it uh, but yes red book is important and it has a lot of uh, important things that are asked in the exam Okay, so that's it for today. Hope this was helpful. Let me know what more questions you want me to answer and make videos on. And thank you for watching. Goodbye.